somebody would want to murder a child. I really feel that somebody killed my brother. And uh, inside me, I, I know somebody killed my brother. If somebody could help us out somewhere, somebody knows something. And uh, may, uh, may God help those who did that to him and his family. The effect of Gary's crash on the investigation, I think, in effect, put an end to any, anybody else coming forward. There are many victims. We knew of more. There are more. They're still out there. They're afraid to come forward. That's when I was finished, because I figured out if they murdered Gary and his son, there was nothing that would stop them. There was no piece of paper. There was nothing we could come up with that was going to get anything done. But Gary Caridori's death pricked Troy Bonner's conscience. He promised Sandy that he would tell Senator Schmidt's committee about the FBI's pressure which led him to lie. I set the record straight. I was, you know, going to do it. Uh, and would, you know, the truth would come out, you know, and somebody would be ha held accountable for his death. And then at the funeral, I had seen, you know, FBI guys, you know, and they, they looked at me. You know, I was supposed to meet Senator Obed and Schmidt for lunch after the funeral. And, uh, you know, that's when I decided, I told my mom, you know, look, we're not going to do the lunch. We're going to hightail it out of Lincoln now. Troy Bonner claims that pressure from the FBI and with the assistance of the county attorney's office in Omaha led him to swear a new statement claiming that he and Alicia Owen had concocted the entire child abuse story. He told this story to a grand jury formed to bring any charges. On July the 23rd, 1990, the grand jury issued a bizarre and contradictory report. It indicted Larry King for fraud and embezzlement and ruled that he had paid young men for sex, but dismissed allegations about his sex ring. It indicted Alan Baer for the serious offense of pandering for sex, but rejected evidence linking him to King or to Citroen, whom it noted had been convicted of separate child molestation charges. It accepted that Troy, Alicia, and Paul Bonatti had been abused, but not by the people they identified. And for refusing to withdraw her evidence, it charged Alicia Owen with perjury. Lauren Schmidt's legislative committee issued a report denouncing the grand jury. Schmidt acknowledges that the system failed both the victims and him. I had, I think, to distinguish a record as anyone can put together in 24 years. I was told that would be curtailed, and it was. I was told I'd have financial problems, and I did. The message was not lost on most politicians in Nebraska. I think the message is that we're delivered was if any legislative committee ever tries to conduct a thorough investigation again, the same thing will happen. It has shaken my faith in the institutions of government. I used to be a firm leader that, that uh, the system would work and uh, that people who did things wrong would be punished. And uh, we discovered uh, victims who claimed to have been abused and who the grand jury acknowledged had been abused but they did not try to find out who had abused those individuals. Instead, uh, they convicted Alicia Owen of perjury. Indefensible from my point of view. The trial took place in July 1991. Troy Bonner testified that the child abuse story had been an invention. As a result, Alicia Owen was sentenced to between nine and 25 years in prison.
I can't find a case in the history of this country where some kid got sentenced to 25 or 30 years in prison for something like this. If you were going to pick a, a, what I call a tell sign, something that says something fishy about the whole thing, it was in the sentencing itself. For some reason, they had to send a signal to every kid who was a potential witness. My opinion again. A signal so loud and clear, if you dare to come forward, if you dare to talk, watch what happens. Alan Bear was fined $500 after pleading no contest to a reduced charge of aiding and abetting prostitution. Peter Citron served two years of a three to eight year sentence. Thanks to Troy Bonner's lies, Larry King never faced child sex charges. For the $40 million fraud, he was given a 15 year sentence, 10 years left on Alicia Owen. I feel really sick. I should be taken out and shot for doing that. And if that was to happen, I, I would go with it. John DeCamp, former state senator and Vietnam veteran, is now the only man fighting to help Larry King's victim. He is the lawyer trying to overturn Alicia Owen's conviction and to expose the cover-up. I live in Nebraska. Hell, I was born here, raised here. I have four kids growing up here. Like it or not, it, it's my heritage, you know? Well, if it's a dirty cesspool that I gotta live in or look back on that I left, that ain't good. The real cost, if I were gonna say to my family, has been the fear and intimidation that's put in some of the kids. A couple of the kids are really, really frightened and uh, really had some sleeping problems over, you know, here, this or that. So that, that's been the real concern I've had. John has received anonymous threats and has turned for advice to his friend and one-time boss, former head of the CIA, William Colby. Uh, old Bill Colby told me better than anything. The, the one thing the bad people can't afford is publicity and, and knocking you off right now or doing something obvious to one of your kids uh, would bring them more trouble than it's worth. I said, you, you have to consider the possibility of some danger to not only your reputation, but to your person. I mean, there are, people do react rather violently to some kinds of charges, or particularly if they're true, there's more apt to be a negative reaction than if they're false. If they're false charges, then they can be reacted to in a normal way, by a libel suit or whatever. But uh, a true, if there's truth in it, there can be a danger in that situation. We've seen that happen in other cases. John arranges to meet Troy Bonner, the young man he sees as the key to the cover-up. He's in great danger. The reason is he carries the secret, so to speak. He served his purpose for the FBI and others by committing the lies that put the seal on the cover-up. He knows that Troy's evidence will be crucial to Alicia Owen's case. And Troy wants to tell the truth, despite very real fears. Uh, my fears are that, you know, I'm not going to be believed again. It's just, you know, going to be a whole other kind of exploitation like it was last time. You know, and afraid that that's going to happen or, you know, I might end up dead. Or a loved one might end up dead. Troy has an overriding reason for putting the record straight. Maybe somebody has a better idea. I want this to go forward and, and have something done so that all those other kids who a lot worse things have happened to can come forward and see that action can be taken. You have to, if you want to protect yourself and your life and your family's life, both now and particularly in the future, is to use the institutions of government that have been set up to protect you and make them work. That means you go into federal court, you go after the people that have done this cover-up and you expose it so there's no longer any percentage on their part in eliminating you because the secret's out. Yeah, that's why we're here today, to, 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 to let it out. John's advice to Troy to tell the truth in court puts him at risk of prosecution by the county attorney's office. Potentially, they could decide to charge him with perjury because now he is telling that they forced me to lie. I did lie at Alicia's trial. I did lie before the grand jury. I did it because the authorities were forcing me to do it and I was scared for my family. Potentially, they could charge him with perjury this time. Troy's appearance in court will keep Alicia Owen out of prison. She's on bail while DeCamp appeals against her perjury conviction. As her hearing approaches, vital new evidence emerges. 
Alicia claimed that some of Troy's videotaped testimony was withheld from the grand jury which indicted her. The tapes that were shown to the grand jury had been edited. Everything that matched Troy's statement was shown. 